So parts of a journal paper. Okay, there's the paper. There's a little bit more detail now. There's the title. There's the authors. There's the abstract. There's the introduction. Materials and methods. If you've got a laboratory paper or a field application paper, or even if you've got a simulation paper, there's a method. Yeah. There's results. Ah, and here's the discussion. See, I told you it was inconsistent. So we're getting a little bit more detail now. And then conclusions, okay? And these all go in that order. And then there's acknowledgement. Then there's nomenclature. There's references. Then the appendix. If you've got a lot of additional work that can't go in the body of your paper that's too um, detailed, you can put it in the appendix. There's the tables and the figures. Now, the figures and tables can go in the body of the paper, okay? A lot of people like to put them in the back of the paper because there's a lot of them. But if there's a few, you can put them in the body of the paper. Title. What are the characteristics of a title? Well, we talked a little bit about this early on this morning. It focuses the reader's attention on the paper content. Clear and concise titles tell you what's going to be in that paper, like Mr. Bob Ladogley's paper, okay? Yeah, it was general, but it tells you what's going to be in that paper. It's what to expect in that paper. And it's necessary for archive searches, okay? For search engines, you need a good title so that for the, the readers that are coming behind you or they're maybe going to be writing papers or using your work so they can have ease of searching it, okay? Now, here's some title examples, the good, the bad, the ugly, okay? There's some good examples. I use these in the technical editor workshop, and I think they're very meaningful, and they're, they always get a laugh when I, when I put them up here, so bear with me a second. The bad ones, I always like hearing about those first so I can learn from them. New methods and specialized techniques used by Super Oil Company, obviously this is general, the, the oil company's name was taken out, to, pro, to process and analyze pressure data gathered during the well testing program at the Heber geothermal field. That is a mouthful. Okay, that's a tough one. That's a bad one. And a look ahead, back to basics. Now, what is in this paper? <laughs> you really want to know. But you as a reader are probably going to pass this paper up even though it might have useful information for you in it. Okay, so you as an author have to remember that when you've got people scanning the literature and looking for your paper. Okay, good ones. Okay, we're going to take the same ones, cast them in a little bit different light, so they are better presented. Well testing program at the Heber Geothermal Field. So we took a paragraph and made it into a phrase. Next, the future of the offshore drilling contracting business, back to basics. Now in that first one, how would you have gotten that out of that title? Okay. I'm not saying that your titles have to be necessarily have to be short and concise, but this shows you the reason why it's a good idea to have them short and concise. Because after you, after you get finished reading that title, especially the first one, I'm going to fall asleep. It'll just wear you out. And if you read a couple of these things a day, it'll just, it, you just, it just takes a lot out of you. Abstracts. State the objectives and the scope of the paper. Why are you writing the paper? That's what should go in the abstract. Remember, 350 words. Describe your method used. If it's a laboratory type paper, experimental type paper, describe that paper. Describe what you did. Summarize the results. State the principal conclusions. And you do that all in the abstract. 350 words. Yep, that's right. That's, yeah. Early on, I mentioned there's two abstracts you write. One is the one to get you into the program committee and get into the conference. The other abstract is the one you write after you read, write the paper. Okay? Okay. The question is, how is this abstract different from the, the abstract you're going to write at the end of the paper? Okay? You notice that the abstract, if, you, if you've ever gone back to the the conference and looked at the abstract for a particular paper that eventually got peer-reviewed 
and got in a journal, just read those abstracts and compare it back to the conference abstract. They're most of the time going to be different. They may be a little longer, okay? It's most of the time length. Introduction. Okay, this is the beginning of the paper. You want to describe the author's contribution, describe what you've done, and here's some suggested rules. You want to present the scope of the problem you're investigating. You know, what is the nature of the problem you're investigating? What is the problem about? Okay. How have other people tackled this problem? How have they solved this problem or not? Okay. Maybe you're doing some new and innovative technique that is solving a problem that the industry has never been able to solve. That needs to come out through the, your literature survey, your literature review. You need to state the method of investigation and justification. Okay. Method of investigation for solving your problem and your justification for doing it that way. All in the introduction. Materials, experiments, or method. Now this is kind of tailored towards laboratory type processes or it could be tailored towards simulation type process or field type process. That's what I mean by materials, experiments, or methods. You could be doing a field experiment or you could do, be doing a laboratory experiment. Here's our little uh, factory up there with going through a method process. Theoretical papers, state the hypothesis, the assumptions, and any theoretical developments, okay? And arguments in that to demonstrate the applicability of your process, okay? Experimental case study papers, what were the purpose of the experiments or doing this case study? You need to describe the apparatus and equipment and procedures. ZJ, you had the question about whether you just put all that in the body of the paper or in the appendix. It depends on the length, in my view. Okay. If my view is that you don't want all the description of your laboratory processes and equipment to detract from the results. Okay. Yeah. You don't want. Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay, the question is, can I describe more about the author's contribution? This is the author's contribution to the literature, okay, to, to uh, doing, solving this particular problem, okay? Correct. The body of authors, okay. So the question is, do you talk about the specific author or do you talk about, if it's multiple authors, you talk about them? No, it's the body of authors that are writing this paper. Clear? Okay. Okay. And then present data and observations. Okay. So you've done these experiments, you've done this field trial, and then you need to present the data either before and after the observations of the, doing the trial or the experiment. And any inferences. Okay. When you did it in the field, when you did a pilot in the field, did it turn out like you, you thought it would? Okay. Or you did a laboratory experiment, did it turn out like your theoretical description said it would? And if it didn't, explain why. Or, try, or explain why it is different.